And then we're going to connect this fan to these other three. Oof. What's good everybody? So today we are going to focus on installing the TP-Link Casa Smart Wi-Fi light switch that's also motion activated. Walking in and then the lights just turn on. We could just say, hey Google, turn off guest bathroom or guest bathroom lights, doesn't really matter. And we're also going to install the single pole Leviton IPH S51LW humidity sensor. There you go. When this comes off, you have three dials. One is for humidity control. One is a timer for the fan to turn off automatically. So you got like one, two, three, four. And then the last one is um, the sensitivity factor of the fan. Now line is what carries electricity to this. So that's like where the electricity comes from. Load is what carries electricity to the next light switch. The fan humidity turns on when there is well, shower. So we're just gonna turn this on. And we're just gonna wait for the humidity to come in and then the fan to turn on. Again, depends on your circulation here, but I did not turn on the fan, which is over here. We're just gonna wait until this turns on. Now the fan will turn off automatically once it deems the humidity is at whatever level that you've set. And if you turn the fan on, it's also going to turn off within a designated timer that you also set when you take off the cover plate. All right, it turned on. Let's turn off the water. You guys can hear that? Yep, turn on automatically. I think it does like 35, 40 seconds. And then we can just turn that off. And then the lights. Let's see here, we're just gonna leave right now. So it took about a minute. There's no buzzing or hissing with these as well. So those are the two switches that we're gonna put right over here. First step is to remove all the screws. All right, you will need a voltage pen. We have a client who is, but I prefer this one. This is the Volt Alert. This actually helps you check for power. Unless you're an electrician, I don't recommend you doing this. This is all for entertainment and educational purposes only. This is really a green screen. None of this is really happening. So that's my uh, disclaimer here. So don't do it. Don't do any of this, okay? But if you do, well, then that's on you. Make sure you turn off all your breakers so you don't get electrocuted. We are gonna be doing this on the live circuit just so you guys can get an idea of how lines, neutrals, grounds are all connected because this is a double switch. It is like a piggyback. This is the button. This is the occupancy sensor. You get your green, which is your ground. You connect this to the metal can on the back or the copper wire. Then you get your neutral. You need a neutral. And then you get two blacks. One is a line and one is a load. See, line load. Now line is what carries electricity to this. So that's like where the electricity comes from. Load is what carries electricity to the next light switch, which is gonna be this one here. Humidity sensor fan control. And uh, yeah, so this one's got one, two, three, four, but no cables provided. So we are gonna have to get our own. Thankfully, we do have extra cables here. So neutral ground line okay so the line goes in here so this is where the power goes and then the load goes to here okay ground is going to go to here uh, then you've got white that's neutral first thing you need to do when you take out your existing switches is take a picture and a video to make sure you remember in case you need to go back and rehook these so let's grab our volt alert pen and see so this is your ground no power there the reason i like this volt alert is because it's very thin and specific. See? So it's not gonna accidentally pick up the power <laughs> just because I'm really close to the, the one with the line. So that one is our load. So that load is coming in from another light switch, which is that one over there. So that line is coming in, and this is our load. And then the power is there. Okay, so there's the piggyback cable right back there at the very bottom. Yep. So that one has power. Okay, I see. All right, I think we should be good then. Let's just take another quick picture here and there. And nothing really here. But those two at the back are very important. So we remove the top wire, but the fan is still on. Right? Well, the reason that is is because 
we're trying to figure out where the load is and where the line is. So usually at the very top of the switches is where the load is and at the very bottom is where the line is. There's usually two inputs. So here you can see the old school switches have the screws on the side and then there are holes in the very back. So I'm pretty certain at this point that this is the load and then that's the line. And then there is a cable coming in again from the line and it's again going into there. And this is why this is still working because this one is the line and then that line is actually going in here. And then there's another cable at the very top, which is the load, but it's separate from this switch. So that way both switches can be independently controlled. So let's just keep going to see if I'm correct. So if I remove that cable at the very bottom, this should no longer work. Okay, you see what happens when you have power? Anyway, so uh, let's, let's see if it popped the breakers. If we touch this cable again, this should turn on the fan and the fan still works. All right, so this is clearly our line. If I'm wrong, let's try this. See, nothing coming in here. There should be no power here, see? No power, that means this is the load and there should be power here. That's the line. So now that we figure out for this switch what these are, let's grab our labels here so that way anybody else in the future is going to be able to figure this out. So this is the load, there you go. Now the other one, it's live, so let's be a little more careful. So we got line, we got our load, so let's go and put this cap on here. Alright, All right. so now that we've identified our load at the very top and our line at the bottom, let's see what that other cable does here. So this, there's no power coming in here, that's the load probably. Um, so that's another load that's going to go in here, and then we need another cable coming in from the line, which is at the bottom here into the line on this switch here. But at the other side, there's not gonna be a secondary cable. Whereas on this one, there's the original line, and then there's a second wire coming in from that same line and goes into here. Got it? So let's go and just remove the copper. Here is the copper wire. Now this will come out nice and easy. Again, nothing happening here, no power because this is our load. So we're just gonna undo that and pull this out. All right, so we pulled out the switch. Remember, load at the top, line at the bottom, and you can see at the very bottom here, there's this that second line. So now we have that white cable in there, which we need to pull out. See, it's a neutral, so we're good on that end. Now remember, when you're pulling this out, you have to be careful if your power's on. So there's nothing here, so we can undo this and there's nothing here. All right, so this is the CASA Occupancy Smart TP-Link sensor. So we're gonna connect the load, nothing here, to this one. All right, so our load is connected. Next is our neutral. So here's our neutral. Now for this one, it could get a little trickier because there's already three cables in here. So you are probably gonna need to grab a cap that's going to support that many um, connections. All right, so there are our neutrals are connected. All right, so we've got our neutral, we've got our load. All right, so let's go and unscrew the screw inside the can. We're going to wrap our green ground wire like so. Now we're going to go and reconnect that by screwing it in. Our ground. All right, so now main cables are all connected. Uh, I don't think we need to worry about the load because we have a separate load for that one. Well, neutral may still be connected, so we may actually need to connect another wire to this. So we're not going to push anything into the can at this point. We're just going to go and connect this. We should get light, and I see a spark. There's our lights. It works, and it works. All right, next let's grab our humidity fan. So there's no cables provided. So with these ones, it's actually easier because you can go and slide this behind, see? So it makes it a lot easier. All right, so let's tighten this white neutral cable. All right, this one's good. And now we're gonna connect this one again to this one, but it's just too many cables. It's always better just to have one. We're gonna split these up because we don't have a cap that will support all five. So we're gonna go and connect this new cable to both of these two neutrals. And then that's essentially going to accomplish what we need it to accomplish. 
So we're gonna go and just cap these three together first. Okay. And now we're gonna go and connect this one to this one. And then we're gonna connect this fan to these other three. Make sure they're all nice and tight. All right, so we've managed to connect five neutral cables. And now let's push this in just a smidgen because we need to start pushing these cables in. So let's connect the ground screw. All right, so now let's connect the line from here to the power and then from the power to the line to the fan switch. So this is a new cable that I'm adding because we need to do a piggy back and then now we're gonna get these three together but let's put a cap on here because uh, there will be power here and then I will probably get electrocuted if I don't. All right, so then these three are gonna go in, which is our occupancy sensor. Just gonna tighten this up. All right, now we've got another cable here that is aligned to our fan, goes to the top, which is the black screw, and then the load, which is this one, goes to the bottom, to the red screw. So let's go and connect that right now. around here on the top and then we should basically get power to the fan green light and we got fan now if you don't have for whatever reason power all you need to do is switch these around so maybe you got the line and the load crossed so flip these around nothing's gonna happen move the cable from the top to the bottom screw and move the bottom screw to the top screw and maybe that will fix it we got it done so we're gonna stick this right here on the side okay so this is the final final uh, breakdown of how we connected it so you take your first switch and we've got our neutral you connect the neutral to the white and the ground goes to the can which is also ground metal and then we have another ground connected from here again to the can so then you have your line and your load and it doesn't matter which one you take the load and then you connect that to the load, then you take the line and you connect it to the line. Then from the line, for the second switch, we feed another cable from the line to the top, which is the line and the fan. And then we take the neutral, connect it to the white. It says W on the back, which is the neutral. Then we take the load, which is coming in from there, and then we connect it to the second switch. Now, if you didn't have a second set of cables coming in, that's a whole separate ball game. So we're never gonna go there. But this is how essentially to hook up two switches together. Now that our switches are completed, let's see the lights in action. Walking in, walking in, and then the lights just turn on. Beautiful. Now if you wanna turn them off, we could just say, hey Google, turn off guest bathroom. Or guest bathroom lights, doesn't really matter. And that's how it is. Now this fan will also turn off automatically after 10 minutes, if you turn that on manually or it's gonna turn on automatically based on the humidity setting that we actually set. So if we take a shower, uh, it's gonna turn on and then turn off. At the very bottom, there's a reset button and then there is also a restart button. Now this is already in pairing mode. You know it's paired because it's flashing red and white, but if it's not, you press the reset button for 10 seconds and then it's gonna go into this flashing mode. Once it's in the flashing mode, you want to go and open up your, there you go. See how it's quickly flashing? You wanna go and open up your CASA application you can program the setting in your casa app to say stay on when there's no motion for 5 10 15 20 minutes the fan humidity turns on when there is well shower so we're just going to turn this on and we're just going to wait for the humidity to kick in and then the fan to turn on again depends on your circulation here but i did not turn on the fan which is over here we're just going to wait until this turns on. Now the fan will turn off automatically once it deems the humidity is at whatever level that you've set. And if you turn the fan on, it's also going to turn off within a designated timer that you also set when you take off the cover plate. All right, it turned on. Let's turn off the water. You guys can hear that? Yep, turn on automatically. I think it's like 35, 40 seconds. 
and then we can just turn that off. And then the lights, let's see here, we're just gonna leave right now. So it took about a minute. There you go. When this comes off, you have three dials. One is for humidity control. One is a timer for the fan to turn off automatically. So you got like one, two, three, four. And then the last one is um, the sensitivity factor of the fan. So tons of features. That's the video. Thanks for watching. See you guys on the next one.